Hey, what's going on, everyone? It is B. Avery here, and I want to thank you for tuning in to this episode of Just My Opinion. And in this episode, of course, we are going to be talking about Avengers Infinity War spoilers. So, yes, I did say spoilers. So if you not have not seen Avengers Infinity War, please stop this video. Put it in your watch later list. Go check out uh, the movie Come Back because I'm going to be talking spoilers up, down, left, right, in and out as if you've already seen the movie. You have been warned. But briefly, before I get into that, I also want to briefly go over the Avengers Infinity War box office opening weekend. Um, and it looks like it is the top uh, or the number one biggest opening of all time. Not comic book movie, not blockbuster summer movie, but all time beating Star Wars The Force Awakens in 2015. Uh, then again, guys, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because this Sunday. So this is the estimated amount. It is not the actual amount. The estimated amount comes, I mean, the actual amount comes out tomorrow, Monday afternoon. And so then I, that's when I will be making another video about this. So this is kind of box office uh, part one. Tomorrow will be part two. But it looks like uh, right now it's at $250 million. The Force Awakens was 247 There's been a lot of speculation and debate over the past few weeks and the tracking on, you know, if Avengers Infinity War will actually do it. And it might. Um... I remember when, excuse me, I remember when Black Panther came out, it's still in theaters right now, that um, the four-day weekend, it did two, uh, $242 million. The three-day weekend, it did $202, uh, that it which came out that Monday. But the Sunday, it was estimated at like $191 or $190. So it jumped another 9 to $10 million. And uh, anywhere, you know, with the estimated amount, it could go up or down, you know, one all the way to maybe three, four or five percent. So it could end up making two forty five, two fifty five. We're just going to have to see. I think it's going to make it because um, it's not going to be two hundred and fifty on the dot. Right now, it says six hundred and thirty million dollars worldwide. It hasn't even opened in China yet. It opens in China on May 11th. Uh, but that's still very uh, this is still very exciting. I'm getting all of my information off Box Office Mojo. And they have so many showdowns here on the first page. They have Avengers Showdown, MCU Top Openers, but the one that's most important to me is the opening weekend showdown. That is comparing The Force Awakens, Jurassic World, Avengers, The Last Jedi, Black Panther, and Infinity War. And if you look at the daily box office, uh, The Force Awakens did win. And now this is official here, the, the Friday and the Saturday numbers. Friday 119 for Force Awakens 105 for Infinity War. Saturday 68 million for Force Awakens, but 83 million on a Saturday for Infinity War. And then Sunday, that's just an estimate, so I'm not gonna read that number. So I'm not gonna dive too much into this right now. I'm not even gonna touch on Black Panther yet. Um, even though it is coming right up there for the number nine spot worldwide of all time, I will touch on that later on tomorrow. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel. So you can you know watch this video, come back tomorrow so that we can actually talk about the actual numbers and not the estimated numbers. But now let's get into spoilers. So you guys know I love this movie. If you don't want to see my spoiler review, subscribe to my channel, go back and look at my non-spoiler review. It is there. There'll probably be a link in the description box. But I gave this a 9.5 out of 10, even though I had my nitpicks in the film. I've seen it twice now. I'm probably going to go again tonight when I reach my destination. Um... And my rating is going to stay the same, even though I still have some nitpicks here and there. Like, um, I feel that there should have been two more big scenes of dialogue. That is right before the Battle of Wakanda. I, I wish we could have got some dialogue with uh, with Black Panther, T'Challa, Shuri, Okoye, and Mbaku or something. On how they actually feel about, you know, helping outsiders and, you know, the Avengers and things like that. Because T'Challa wanted to do that. But I imagine Okoyo didn't. There wasn't a lot of featurists and interviews and things like that. And so they, they didn't have that in the film. Also, there could have been more dialogue between T'Challa and Black Panther. And also, you know, with Winter Soldier and how, you know, he was able to, uh, you know, get his mind right. There was also that scene in the trailers where Bruce Banner was, uh, I guess, tinkering with the Hulkbuster. And he may have been talking, well, I'm assuming he was talking to somebody. But, you know, I would have, we could have got that dialogue. But then when um, when Captain America, Falcon, Scarlet Witch, Vision, and Black Widow met up with Bruce Banner in a ro uh, war machine at the facility, and they had Agent General Ross in the hologram, there should have been more dialogue in that scene right there, too. I kind of just feel like the film rushed through that. 
Uh, but really, those are really my only nitpicks. Other than, you know, Peter Dinklage's character as the giant dwarf really didn't do it for me either. Uh, but other than that, guys, those are really my only complaints in the film. Um, other, oh, yeah, then Chris Pratt being a dumbass. Uh, I mean, they're a little jokey here and there too much with uh, Drax the Destroyer, who is called Drax the Destroyer, but doesn't destroy anything. But those are just my nitpicks. I still want to give it a 9.5. But jumping right in, the opening scene, it, this film picks up right where Thor Ragnarok lives off, where Thanos is infiltrating the Asgardian ship. Now, we don't know what happened to Korg or uh, Valkyrie. I'm assuming they got away because later on in the film, Thor talked about how uh, half of the Afghans was slaughtered. And they also ties in with Thanos' mindset because he just doesn't want to murder people. He just wants perfect balance. That's one of the things that makes his villain role so good, played by Josh Brolin. Did a great job. Thanos, best villain in the world. Um, and so he just doesn't want to kill people. You know, he just kill, killing half of everything like that. But, you know, we get uh, Loki dies in the very beginning. We get the very the introduction to the Black Order. Thor talking trash, talking about Thanos should talk too much. Thanos just grabs your attention. He said the little speech that he was talking about that in the trailers. It, it was just dope as hell. I was loving it. Um, Hulk came in there. We got look, was like we got a Hulk. Hulk got a few uh, punches in or whatever. Got a, a over the hand smash like this, but then ended up getting his his ass whooped. You know, Thanos hit him right there in the little pressure point in the shoulder and hit, hit, hit him right there and just was just you know landing him with two and three pieces here and there, grabbing his head, kneeing him, uh, suplexing his butt and down into the ground. It was lovely. I mean, the Hulk, Hulk is so strong, but to get him to show him get whooped by Thanos just like that in the opening scene just kind of lets you know early on. Okay, Thanos is not messing around. He's a force not to be reckoned with, and that's just the truth. And he only had one Infinity Stone doing that. The Power Stone, which is one of the most important to me, I think the most important. I don't, I don't know, but I'm gonna say the Power Stone is the most important because it amplifies it amplifies all the other gems. You know what I'm saying? Um, so like if you had a time stone, you may be only be able to go back in time in a certain area. But if you have the power stone to enhance the, that gem, you can, you know, take time back in the whole universe and same thing with all other stones. But, uh, it's sad that he Heimdall died. That sucks. I was like, no, black man, my brother, no, Idris Elba, you know, but he used the dark magic to get Hulk back to the uh, earth. That was cool. Of course, in the comics, we know that that role is something that um, that uh, Silver Surfer did or whatever. Uh, but I like that Loki died, and I think he's really dead this time. And I really don't want Loki to come back. I like Loki as a villain, but he's not my favorite. My favorite villains right now um, are Thanos is number one. Loki, no, hell no. Thanos is number one. Killmonger is number two. Hela is number three. Vulture is number four. Um, Hydra slash the Winter Soldier villains. Uh, Robert Redford is number five. Um, you know I like Iron Monger, Loki in there somewhere. But that's my order of villains. So that was just a great opening scene. You know we get to meet Doctor Strange. Now I was just gushing because I just love Doctor Strange so much in this movie. I was disappointed with him. Um, you know in uh his film or whatever, but. I like how he went to go recruit Tony Stark. He was like, hey, we don't got time. You need to come. Bruce Banner was just, you know, hey, Thanos is this, Thanos is that. You know, yeah, you know, and I like hesitate. He was hesitating to call Tony. I mean, call Captain America. And I like that's when we first get the Black Order to show up, which is um, um, what was his name? Ebony Ma. And I don't know the other guy's name, the big dude, or whatever. Now I wish we could have got more dialogue out of him. But we didn't. But the fight down there was just so amazing. I love how Spider Man came through there and caught that uh, that uh, the hand. I like Wong how and Doctor Strange how they was teaming up using the portals when Ebony Ma threw those spikes and he made it come through one portal and not the other and hit him, but he tried to block it. Ebony Ma was a uh, serious. Oh, uh, you're worthless lives. Um, this is mercy that you're dying at the hands of Thanos and the the Black Order. You know, I was I was loving all of that. So, uh, Corvus Glaive was the guy with the little glaive. Proxima Midnight was the okay. So, Call Obsidian, uh, te, yeah, him and uh, Ebony Maw. It was nice. I liked that. Uh, the whole with showing Iron Man using the um, nanotech armor that was cool as hell. That was dope. Uh, and I I like when villains and things you you know use the brain like. 
They're, okay, Ebony Ma is not trying to fight them. He's not He's not doing a punching match. He is just trying to get the stone, and they are in the way. So he tries to get it, and he's like, look, I can't get it off. Let me not waste any time. Let me just beam him up into my ship and fly back home because I don't want to let Thanos down and I can try to get it off that way. I, I try, you know, he's not, he's, you know, I, I, I like that or whatever. And that's just a great way um, to keep the story going. I love the way that Peter Parker got into the fight or whatever, because I was watching some other people and it was like, man, Tony Stark is so wrong. He's an involving a child in this war and things like that. But no, Tony Stark did not want uh, Peter Parker there. He did not want him there. He just brought him the suit because he went up there on his own I mean, Peter Parker, Spider-Man came on the scene on his own. He was up there uh, and he couldn't breathe and he was just trying to save him. But Spider-Man, um, you know, um, you know, webbed and got stuck in the ship. Now, I, I do kind of like the fact that uh, Hawk is afraid of Thanos and he just got his ass whooped. So he don't want to come out. So he was like, no, I liked all that. That's cool. That's dope. I'm, I'm loving all that. And there really wasn't that much Hulk in this, but I really, really do feel that in Avengers 4 that comes out next May, that they are just setting up Hulk to be like the biggest character, to have the greatest character moment in the whole movie. Because the best character moments in this movie for me was Doctor Strange and Thor. Thor was number one, Doctor Strange number two. But uh, I want to see Hulk just F the F out of everything in Avengers 4. I want to just see him just come out of there just Hulk. And just boom, smash the hell out of everything. Like, I want to see ripples in the ground of how big he's smashing. I want him to actually get stronger the angry he gets the Hulk that we know, the Hulk that we've been wanting these 10, 11 years. You know what I'm saying? I want to see some more thunderclaps. I want to see him lose. Like, I want to see Hulk lose control. So, where after he beats the bad guy, he's turning on the Avengers. Because I don't have it right here. But this is part two of my Avengers, uh, when they go, the ultimate Avengers, when they go to Wakanda. Part one in that, uh, is it over here somewhere? No, it's not. And that Hulk actually loses control and turns on the Avengers. It's not his fault. He don't mean to, but they're going, you know, I, I want to see that or whatever. But um, I do like the, pop, uh, like the pop culture references from Spider-Man talking about aliens and Ebony all falling out of there. Dr. Strange was kind of being an asshole. Time. You know, they did save his life or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And he was kind of being a jerk. I'm not, I really, I mean, you know, um, I wish they would have written it in there to where Tony Stark was not able to control the ship and they just would have had to go to like, damn, we're stuck in some autopilot or something. You know, excuse me. But for him to just choose to make the conscious decision to go to a uh, Titan like that was just like, I mean, come on, bro. You know, it could have been a better decision, but it's not that big a deal. I'm not going to um, I'm, I'm not going to cry over that. Now, uh, after that, we kind of get the vision and the Scarlet Witch romantic scenes. And that's cool. I liked all that vision was getting his butt with most of this. Now, and when I first saw this the first time, I was kind of like, wait a minute. Why? How can Falcon, Captain America and Scarlet uh, and a Black Widow beat? Proxima Midnight and Corvus Glaive, but two of the powerful most Avengers, uh, Scarlet Witch and uh, Vision Kent. Well, the second time I viewed it, it made more sense because Vision was injured initially, before, like well before the fight started. So he was, well, I'm sorry, I keep wiping my nose. Uh, he was just incapacitated or whatever. He couldn't phase, he, you know, so it was kind of Scarlet Witch versus these two powerful people, uh, two versus one. Plus, she really couldn't fight because she was trying to uh, aid um, Vision or whatever. So she was two on one plus babysitting somebody else that was incapacitated. But Vision was able to get a few hits in there. He shot the beam. Cor Corvus Glaive had that uh, that nice glaive or whatever that was able to deflect an infinity, infinity Stone and also try to pluck it out of his head. I think that glaive is also how he was able to sneak through the vibranium shield towards the end in Wakanda, but I'll get to that. But when Falcon and them came through, when uh, Captain America, people was cheering. I was cheering in my auditorium, in my theater. You know, he, she threw the little spear. He caught it. That was dope. I just love how... Like the hand to hand fighting through that whole scene was nice, and the way they used the powers was nice, and the way uh, Scarlet Witch is flying around and doing this, and you know, and all of that. I, I liked all that. That was very creative. We got some nice wide shots as well of them just like, ching, 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 ching. I, I was feeling all that. I, I, I love the choreography. I loved all that. 
Um, you know, then next, you know, there was, uh, hey, we just wanted some privacy or whatever, all that good stuff. I do like the fact that we get to see Paul Bettany and his human, humanoid face because, you know, he got a break. You know, an executive in Hollywood or an agent was like, hey, man, you out of there, you know, you're not going to get no roles. And then Josh Whedon got him in uh, Age of Ultron. And now, because I like Paul Bettany, I think he's a pretty funny guy. Uh, excuse me, guys. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, I think he's a pretty funny guy. So after that, that's when, um, you know, they go back to Avengers Mansion. And that's when I was like, okay, we could have got a nice little piece of dialogue right here from Captain America. All right, I'm Captain America. This is what we're going to have to do. Thanos is more powerful than we've ever faced. And that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like that stuff. Whether you may call it corny or not, I think it's fun. We could have got a nice little build up there. Um, so now with the Guardians, uh, let's talk about the Guardians for a second. The Guardians was great. I do want to see Drax actually kick some more butt. But most of the jokes were pretty funny. They go pick up Thor. It was the stress signal. I like all of that. You know, they're trying to just do the right thing. I love everything with that. Uh, I love how they split up the teams. It was brilliant. It was. It made sense to me. Um, I was feeling it or whatever. I, I really was. Um, let's see. Let's see. Now, uh, let's see here. Who who we want to talk about next? I talked about Thanos. He was just dope. Everything about Thanos was dope as hell, right? I love Thanos. I love Thanos. Um, I love the relationship with Thanos and Gamora. That that was nice too. Even when he was gonna go get the ether, um, the uh, the red stone from nowhere, um, not Groot, but Drax got on my nerve. I'm like that man has put him to sleep, but I'm like Drax, you need to keep it together, you idiot, like. Come on, but I like how they did that there. What they did with the what they did with the reality stone was just freaking beautiful. I love that. To where on nowhere we kind of got that little uh trickery imagery on Titan or whatever. He showed how Titan looked in the past and how it looked now. I cannot wait to watch that on Blu-ray or 4K when it comes out in a number of months. Uh it, it just looks so beautiful. I know it's gonna look so amazing. Uh, you know, since it's filmed in IMAX cameras or filmed in 4K. But I like what they did with the reality stone. I like the fact that Thanos was when he told Chris Beck, I I like you. Because she told she said, Hey, I know what a soul stone is. You're gonna have to kill me because I don't want to be tortured and have to reveal this information. Guys, I'm so sorry for wiping my nose so much. I don't know what's going on. Um uh, and he was going to do it, but he had the reality stone and changed the lasers into bubbles. And he was like, I like you. And, you know, because he saw Chris Pat as somebody that was going to be able to do what was absolutely necessary to get the job done. So that was dope. I like that. It was also cool to where he was able to turn Mantis and Drax the Destroyer into cubes and things like that. So, um, you know, it was just a great scene, another great scene, another, um, you know, the, just another thing they did well. I was very surprised that we did get to see the uh, the Red Skull. I was so happy. At first, I thought that was Death um, in the Black Cloak, uh, but it was the Red Skull from uh, the first Avenger that came out in 2011, the Captain America movie. Um, so the Red Skull was banished there. Now, this was not Hugo Weaving. Which is interesting because I was under the impression that he was on the film contract. So I know he didn't want to come back. He said that many, many years ago. But I thought they, I thought he was on the contract to where he had to. And it wouldn't have been a big deal. It was a small scene. I mean, you could have done that. I really like uh, Hugo Weaving. And I wish he would have came back for continuity's sake. Um, but at the same time, it's not a, it's not like a real care. I mean, uh, it wasn't his face. It was a red score. So you could have put anybody in there. I'm on IMDb right now trying to look up the actor's name because he did do a good job um i kind of actually like the voice better than hugo weaving but i just want hugo weaving to come back because of continuity sake but when then uh, it was nice when uh gamora was like <laughs> yeah that's what you get there no you don't love nobody you evil as hell so uh it's funny that you've been killing everybody and you get right here to the finish line and you don't love nobody so you ain't gonna get no soul stone he just looking at it like yeah, you're about to die. I love you. And she's like, no. And uh, she was like, hot tears. And uh, Red Skull was like, not for you. And he was like, he was like, something he said, it was just dope as hell. He was just like <laughs> focused. And he grabbed her and it was a slow mo. And he threw her off. And I like what they were doing with, um, man, I don't, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I like what they were doing with all of that. It was very nice. It teleported him over here and he woke up. He had it in his hand. Um, that, that was nice. It was also just a smart plot point to where 
if he has the Tesseract, you know, he needs to get there first so he can just teleport anywhere in the universe that he wants. You know what I'm saying? So that's just smart. You know, um, I like that. So after he did that, he goes to Titan or whatever. And um, that's when they fight. Now, this is one of my favorite scenes. Just the whole the whole thing was, was choreographed very nice or whatever. It was just choreographed beautifully. Okay. First, we get Dr. Strange just over there chilling. He little monologue and talking. And then uh, Tony Stark, Iron Man, comes down, crashes him with a ship. Then I was... Oh, powers up with the power stone, blast them out. It just, it was just a wonderful choreography of them tag team and using all of their abilities at once. I, oh yeah, the Iron Spider suit, bad mfing ass. That spider, the iron, and I was like, I'm not even looking forward to the Iron Spider suit because I'm just like, I like the original Spider Man, you know, blah blah. blah but the, the the arms coming out was nice. The trailer when we saw Spider Man flipping through the air and going through all the debris and all that, that wasn't like that in the trailer or whatever. He actually had the Iron Spider legs. Save me, people. Save you. Save you. I forgot your name. This is right after Thanos threw the moon or whatever. So that was dope. So I like that type of false advertising to where the, a, the, a line that we get in the trailer or a shot is, is said different or it's, it's shot different, but don't just put something completely in the trailer that's not in the movie at all, like Thor raising up his and getting powered up from the hammer, even though he made a dope-ass interest, which I'll talk about later, or the scene at the very end of the first trailer when all the Avengers are running like towards the screen or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that wasn't in the movie at all. But man, it was just so nice, the choreography on the, the Titan fight. It, that was just done beautifully. Um, the on, My only gripe, and there was some people talking about this on the way out the theater. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the first time I saw it, it was like, when they had him out there, instead of trying to pull off the glove, why didn't they just try to chop his arm off? And I was like, yeah, they could have tried to do that in my home because I want my home. But he was like, yeah, bro, don't Iron Man got one of these little laser things? He could have tried the laser's arm off. And I was like, okay, yeah, they probably could have tried to do that or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I can't help it, you know, they could have tried to do that or whatever, because Iron Man does have a little laser. Um, uh, I know he was one of trying to pull him off, but um, I, what was Drax, was Drax holding his feet? Because I, cause Dr. Strange was holding one arm with those red bands. And then Peter Quill threw that little device, that magnetic device was pulled down the other hand, and Spider-Man was bubbing him up. Nebula was on top. You know, doing the my thing. So I think, I think uh, that I think Drax was holding his legs or something like that. But when Peter Quill could have, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it didn't work out. Peter Quill want to be a dumbass to get off freaking emotional and mess up the whole plan. You are an idiot. You are an idiot. But what was so dope even before that was you know uh, Doctor Strange up there. You know, looking at all the uh, you know tripping out or whatever. It was fourteen million six hundred and five different outcomes, and they could only live one. And that's why he gave him the time stone later on because it was like we in the end game, and later on he's like, look, this was the only way that with our one in fourteen million chance, you living and me giving him the the time stone this way was the only way. So maybe they messed it up on Earth, but we did what we had to do up here on Titan. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but that was nice. But after after Thanos broke out, we got the one on one fight scene with Doctor Strange and uh, Thanos. Dope as hell, you know what I'm saying? Thanos threw a blast at him. Uh, 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 Doctor Strange absorbed it and threw it back like in a mirror, and they were just kind of going back and forth. And Doctor Strange like, block this, this, he's doing. I was just like, oh, it was a back and oh snap, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I was loving it. And then Doctor Strange got most in. Iron Man came in there with his bleeding edge armor, just blowing the crap out of him. I wasn't expecting all that, and it was just so smart. They, they, like, they, I wouldn't have thought of this. They, like, Dr. Strange was like, he was talking to the Club of Levitation. You know, hey, keep him from closing his fist. Because Thanos can't use the Infinity Gauntlet if his fist is open. So that's that's the way they got him the first time. And then I, when he came in after the one-on-one Dr. Strange, he shot that little device that kept Thanos from closing his hand. That's how he was able to hang with him. You know what I'm saying? And then Thanos ripped it off. And then Iron Man kicked him with another piece of nanotech and kicked his leg into the ground. So that's how it was just clever. And he stabbed him and like uh, he, everybody was, oh, he thought he was going to die. No, he he didn't die. Um, you know, he was, uh, Dr. Strange was like, I'll spare your life if you, um, if you, um, you know, I, I if you spare his life, I'll give you the time stone. So Iron Man is like, man, what's going on? You know, so Wakanda, we get to Wakanda now, right? So... I want, I wonder 
what is going to happen? I, I like the fact that Shuri was smarter than Tony and, and Bruce. I like how they did that. That was I was just, just like, why don't you just do it this way? Duh. And it's like, you know, it, it just clearly proves that she's smarter. So I like that. I was a little bummed out that my black people, my Wakandas, was dying by Call of Obsidian. He was not. He was. I was like, all right, yeah, we're not really showing no black people dying. All right, because I was, you know, I don't, I didn't want black people to just be like cannon fodder or getting the ass whooped. I didn't want to see that. And it was almost that. That was almost the case until Call of Obsidian came and was wrecking them in the uh, in the. He killed about three, four, five people, and then Black Panther came and punched the hell out of them. But Corvus Glaive killed a few people too up in the lab. And I'm not, we're not sure if Shuri's dead. I hope she's not dead. <laughs> but um, I do like how um, Black Panther or Wakanda, they have the blue shield. I just wish we could have got more dialogue from in, in Wakanda. Like, it didn't, I mean, what I don't understand is with the success, I know they shot some more stuff. I know they did. We know they did. That's just a given. And with the success of Black Panther, it just seemed like they were like, okay, we've already shot these scenes. It may not have much effects, more dollar. Let's include that, but you know, I, I don't know. It could have been more Wakanda and Black Panther. But uh, I like the blue thing. I, I was, I was, I was so wondering in the trailers when we saw the ships coming down with the Outriders, and the Outriders were pretty serious, and they look more uh, much threatening in the movie than they did in the trailer. So I like how they didn't reveal much. I was wondering. I was like, okay, why don't why are they landing just coincidentally on the outside of the dome? Wouldn't one of them try to land? inside the city so they don't have to come in they're already there but they did do that and they crashed or whatever so i like that they had that in the movie i also wonder like if that was the whole army because that was just like the border tribe in the door melange and the um and the mountain tribe the jabari tribe where was the river tribe where was the merchant tribe you know where was the other uh, the river tribe or, or whatever uh because they Watch this movie right here to see some of their defenses. Uh, Wakanda's going to have to step up their defenses or whatever. Because they had the shield, right? But that was like, what if they circle around the thing? They're going to have to step up their defenses. And if you've seen this, they have all these guns and cannons around too. Because when they open up the portal, when they open up the barrier, what if they would have had some cannons and guns mounted up way back here in the city and like fired all their weapons over at that uh at that border and right when it was about to land all the bullets in the mayhem that's when they opened it up you know like see this you know what you know what i'm talking about you can find it somewhere uh but i liked all of that it was so dope seeing captain america and black panther running and beating everybody and them jumping and and you know taking on the crowd or whatever that that was nice i was loving that uh, War Machine was doing his thing. I love seeing him fly on the inside of the edge and dropping all those grenades. He was very resourceful. At one point, when it was opening up the border, he was just up there at the top, just letting uh, three machine guns go at once with rocket launches and grenades. Just boom, 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 till they got taken out. Uh, we really didn't get much from the uh, the uh, the what you call it suit, the what you call it suit. I'm calling it the what you call it suit. The um, what is it called? Uh, the Hulkbuster or whatever. You know, we got uh, uh, Iron Man or uh, Bruce Banner in there tripping over himself or Koye looking at him crazy. Um, it was just a great scene. And then we get, uh, you know, let me back up real quick. So Thor is at Nedevalir trying to make Stormbreaker. And Stormbreaker is Better Ray Bill's weapon. I don't know why they're making it Thor's weapon. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Better Ray Bill is another alien from like the planet Corbin that's worthy as well that has the same powers as Thor. He ends up looking like Thor and he will Stormbreaker while Thor was another weapon, not more near, but something else, I think. Uh, but, you know, he, so we got that. We see that um, Stormbreaker can um, can manifest, can call on the Bifrost. So Thor can just teleport all around the universe now, all around the galaxy. So that's dope. One thing that, like, I said that Peter Dinkins' character really didn't do it for me. I didn't, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it either. But something that's so annoying, when you have such an important thing going on right now, why would you not have all your supplies together? He didn't have the handle. Yeah, it's kind of cool that uh, Groot was able to do that. I liked all that. Uh, but is Groot worthy? Uh, so, you know. But I said out there to say because Thor comes through with one of the badass 
uh, introductions of all time, like on that battlefield, and he just came through blown. We see his hammer of uh, Stormbreaker flying around, and it knocks the Outriders off of uh, the Hulkbuster, and then, you know, um, Rocket is on his leg, and Groot is down there like this, like, yeah, whose ass can I kick? Man, like, everybody was woo-hoo cheering in the theater. I was loving it. It was just dope, and then it was like, give me a thunder! And he just jumped up, and I'm, I would say, but I'm just like, ugh. Like, as soon as it hit, I was like, ugh, in the movie. It, it was, I was so pumped up. I was so damn excited. It was it was just perfect. And Thor just went ham on everybody, man. Uh, you know, it was kind of funny where he was, you know, Captain America was like, new haircut. And he was like, yeah, I see you copping my beard. And, you know, Groot, I didn't expect Groot to be such a threat as teenage Groot. But he was still able to impale some of these outriders. And he was like, I am Groot. Captain America, I am Steve Rogers. That was funny, and usually I don't like jokes in serious moments, but these jokes in this in this uh, in this part right here work very well, uh, and, and I laugh. And Thor just going around wrecking shop, and I've always talked about how Thor always seems underpowered or whatever in all of his films. No, the, the strongest Thor is in this movie is what I know Thor to be, and like this right here, and uh, and all the you know other cartoons and animations and comics and things like that. And so uh, I really want Thor and Hulk to just really, and Captain Marvel, which we'll talk about in a second, to really go off um, in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, we got all that. I love seeing um, Bucky and uh, and uh, uh, Groot, not Groot, but Rocket Raccoon spin around in a circle. That was dope. We got um, and Baku and yeah, yeah, you know, chanting and things like that when they won. And then Thanos comes up, man, and whoops the crap out of everybody. It was so nice to see Scarlet Witch. She was able to do uh, to blow up the um, the Infinity Stone, the Milestone. But Thanos did the Tom Stone and went back. Uh, but I do like, but just leading up to that, just a slow mo showing all the characters running up to Thanos one by one by one, getting taken out or whatever. Iron Man thrown into some rocks. You know, Captain America in there just trying to uppercut him. Sure, you can. You know, and it's not working. And he just. Captain America, I just like him so much. He was not able, you know, he's not going to give up or whatever. Thanos is like, somebody on Facebook was like, I think it was real unrealistic that Captain America was able to uh, hold back Thanos. I was like, no, he wasn't holding the back. Thanos was just trolling him, just like, look at this weak little man thinking that he can really compete with me, having fun with him. Okay, I'm done having fun. I'm going to punch you in the face or whatever. And that was dope. Um, he went back He went back in time. Um, that's why we should have got more dialogue from Captain America and T'Challa and all that. But he took back in time, brought Vision back to life, plucked it out of his head. Vision turned gray, killed him, and uh, Thor came out of nowhere at the last minute, blasted the hell out of him. And with the Infinity Gauntlet, I was kind of thinking like, okay, Thor is able to beat him with all the gems. But to me, Thanos was caught completely off guard with a big-ass lightning bolt and a big-ass uh, axe. And when he was trying to block it with his energy... I think that was just kind of inexperienced because I think with the gun, it's kind of like, even though you have something powerful, I don't think Thanos just knew how to use the Infinity Gauntlet that well or whatever. But it was just still a nice scene. And, you know, he had to get in his face like, man, I'm using on die. He's like, oh, he should have went for the head. Snap. I was like, oh, damn. They really did it. All the Guardians are gone except for Mantis and Rocket. Gamora's gone. Two, um, Spider Man's gone, Black Panther's is gone, Falcon, Winter Soldier is gone, Groot. Uh, I said Groot. A lot of the, uh, yeah, all of them gone just for the original Avengers. You know what I'm saying? Falcon, Falcon, the Winter Soldier, uh, or the White Wolf. Who else on the Avengers team? Falcon. Uh, Chris Scarlet is there. Don Cheetah is there. Doctor Strange is gone. Spider Man is gone. Black Panther is gone. Uh, Vision is dead. Elizabeth Olsen. Well, she's. I think I can't remember if she left or not. But anyway, and then the film ends, man. And um, you know, we get to see Thanos. You know, he accomplished his goal or whatever. Um, it was a great film. I really did love it. Let me see what else do I want to talk about. If anything, I just can't wait to see it again, man. I might go see it tonight. Uh, and then, of course, we get the uh, end credit scene with Nick Fury and Maria Hill both disappearing. Uh, and that's just crazy because everybody that knows was supposed to, everybody for the most part that knows how to fix this is gone. Like, 
Nick Fury is gone. He called Captain Marvel. Doctor Strange is gone. Like, those are important people. You know, Doctor Strange knows about the Infinity Stones. So, like, and at first I was like, why can't Doctor Strange teleport back to Earth with his, but I think that you can't, he can't do that across the universe or the galaxy. He can, you know, do it, you know, within proximity on Earth and stuff like that. But, the, you know, Cap, uh, so we know Captain Marvel comes out in March and that is going to be uh, a prequel. It's going to be in the 90s. We did not get to see Hawkeye or Ant-Man. Uh, I like them both. And so, of course, we're going to get Ant-Man in two months. Uh, I'm wondering if Hawkeye is going to be in that movie. He should be. Um, and so this is what I want to see in Avengers 4. Hawkeye and Ant-Man, Captain Marvel, uh, Thor kicks some ass, and Hulk be the standout. Uh, I want to see Hulk. I just want to see Hulk. Man, like, I want to see Hulk really mess some stuff up, guys. Um, but, y'all, y'all, this this film was fantastic, man. 9.5 out of 10. I freaking love that half of the universe is dead, y'all. Half the universe is dead. Um, half the universe is dead, man. This is crazy. So, um, I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, we know Black Panther. We know they're going to come back, Black Panther and, um, and Spider-Man and stuff like that. But, I mean, it is, it, it's, it's, woo, you know. It is what it is. So, um, um, guys, that is just my opinion, my spoilers opinion for Avengers Infinity War. What did you think? Did I leave anything out? You can leave it in the comment section below. Spoil the way because this is spoilers. <laughs> this is spoilers. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like this video, that's fine. Uh, but you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also go to my website, check me out there, bookmark it, and also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff. It's right at the bottom of the screen, and I made it very easy by providing a link to all this good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review. Uh, spoilers for Avengers Infinity War. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Key Davery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.